Okay, hi everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you the same as last video how to configure dual ISP redundancy failover uh, using the GUI. The last video, I'm show you how to configure internet failover and internet redundancy failover using the command line. But in this video, I'm show you again how to the configure the internet redundancy failover, but we use the GUI from the Winbox connect to the multi router and configure by the GUI okay as you told I'm just told you already for the dual ISP um, by the uh, different uh, ISP company dual ISP is mean the different uh, uh, ISP company ISP1 and ISP2 in this video uh, for the ISP1 I'm by the one link for the ISP2 I'm by the one link for the backup link from the ISP2 I'm configure for the backup link and for the ISP1 and configure for the active active link primary link okay for the failover and load sharing different for the failover it means active active stand active standby okay, for the load sharing active active okay load, share, load balancing has two failover and uh, load sharing Okay, and then we go to the left, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you clearly about the uh, configuration. Okay, okay, this is uh, my router. I'm connect to the different ISP. Okay, ISP one and ISP two. Okay, this is uh, our network for only the one VLAN for the one uh, neighbor. Okay. Okay, and then this is the information uh, from the uh, we got from the ISP when we purchase the internet provider from the ISP. ISP provide the information and IP address to the client or to the customer or to the us. Okay, this is the step by step that we have to configure. Okay, by in the in the first. Okay, and then I'm go to the Windows ISP client one. Okay, I'm connect to the wind box. Follow our step. Okay, for the our step, we set the interface name and add IP address to the interface. Okay, and then I'm going to to the interface and change the interface name. Okay, for the interface name, I'm already changed ISP1, ISP2, and LAN. But I'm not yet to add the IP address to the interface LAN ISP1 and ISP2. And then I'm going to add the IP address. Okay, IP, you click on the IP address and IP address. Okay, and then you can click add. Okay, tie the command, tie the IP address. Okay, slash 24 for the LAN interface. Okay, add more slash 24 okay this IP for the interface ISP1 that you see in the our requirement okay okay and then 11 not 11 not. one slash 24 and ISP2 okay Okay, for the step one, we already need to add IP address to all in the first. Okay, LAN, ISP1, ISP2. Okay, and then we go to the step two and for the ACP server. Can click IP, the ACP server. Okay, and then you click on the DHCP setup. Okay, for the DHCP server interface, we assign to the interface LAN. Okay, next. Okay, this is the network ID. That way, that uh, assigned to the client. Okay, this is the rank that IP address rank that provide to the client. Okay, you can check it up to you. Okay, this is the DNS server. You can use the DNS server that uh, as we, from the ISP provider. Okay, for me, use. DNS server 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. Ok, 
Okay, list time. Okay. Okay, and already to set up complete. Okay, you can to see IP. Address pool. Okay, this is the rank. Okay, IP address that we assign to the client. So you can change. It's up to you. Okay, step two already. We go to step three. I click on IP. The S. Okay, you can add server. Ten X Okay, right. Okay. IP address. IP DNA. Okay, already. Okay, and then we go to the step four. Step four is very important in this video. Focus on the internet for over. This span on the this ten. Okay. <coughs> okay, and then I'm go to the IP. And drive. Okay. Okay, run. Okay, again, IP run. Okay, let's see. Okay, and then I'm um, at run. Okay, default route and then you can add the gateway from the ISV1. Okay, this is gateway. Okay, and then for the distance matrix, for the ISV1, um, set the primary router, primary ISP or active, active link and or active router. Okay, no, active uh, ISP. Okay. For the uh, distance, uh, we, uh, we can uh, configure internet failover uh, depend on the distance. If you, if you want to uh, set uh, which uh, ISP is the primary, you can set the distance matrix lower than uh, other ISP. Okay. In this video, um, ISP 1, I'm set distance 1 and ISP 2, I'm set distance 2. It means for 1, uh, the number of distance lower than the uh, number of this 10 ISP2 so uh, ISP1 is uh, uh, primary and ISP2 is uh, secondary or backup link or backup okay you can set somehow you can set uh, 5 on uh, ISP1 5 or ISP2 10 it's up to you based on the uh, number of the this 10 it, this 10 is lower than other uh, ISP is mean the uh, ISP is a primary okay let you see okay for in this video I'm set for one and for the ISP is primary ISP one. Okay, and then I add one more. Okay, get the ISP two two five four. Okay, and then for the distance, you can set ten of two or three or five or four is up to you. But the uh, secondary uh, ISP you have to big then uh, ISP one okay for two big then also okay big then or high then okay you can see this one is primary okay okay and then you go to the step five and ball IP and click five volt. Okay, click on NAT and add NAT. Okay, for the general, you can click on SOC NAT, chain. Okay, our interface, you can click ISP1 and action, you can click your Mercurate. Okay, and then add one more for the ISP2. IP address, fiber. Okay, add one more, general, and our interface, ISP2. Okay, action. You can click on the Mercurate, okay, and then it's okay. Okay, already for the step five. Okay, and then we go to the step six testing failover. Okay, before testing the failover, I'm um, okay. I'm um, ping from the window ISP to the uh, ISP the IP from the internet. Okay. 
Okay, and then I'm ping to this IP, internet IP. Is working or not? Okay, it's working right now. Okay. Okay. Okay, the we uh, we ping already to working, but we not yet to know the traffic. Okay. Okay, we not yet to know the traffic from the window SV1 goes through the SV1 or goes through to the SV2. Okay. Uh, before we configure the, for the SV1 the active or primary router so the traffic goes through the ISV1 okay so you make sure the traffic goes through the ISV1 or ISV2 you can uh, tie the command line from the video ISP and press the route okay that for the make sure the traffic goes through the ISP one or not okay if the traffic uh, goes through from the gateway of the uh, magnetic and goes through to the this gateway it means the correct ISP one okay then you can see track the ISP Okay, this is the window SP we press it to this IP and the traffic you will see goes through this IP gateway from the magnetic router and then the traffic goes through this gateway from the ISP1 go to the internet. Okay, there you see we waiting for the checking the way, the best way or the bad part. Okay, there you see okay, go through, goes through this IP. Then go through this gateway, this link. Okay, did you see? Ten dot ten dot ten dot two five four. Okay, it's correct right now because this IP is a primary IP, primary ISP. Okay, complete. Go to this destination. Okay, and then I'm go to the my page also. Press it. I'm just the command press it. Right, and okay, then you see I'm close this one and I'm go again. Okay. Okay, start. Okay, there you see this gateway. This is your gateway from the ISP1. Okay, okay, and then I'm testing the failover and disconnect link from the ISP1. Okay, there you see the driver or bit first can run on the ISP1. Okay, okay, and then I'm go to the uh, disconnect. Uh, I cable from the ISP one. Okay, disconnect. The internet is still working or not? Okay, I'm um, disconnect this one. Okay, there you see. Okay, you start still uh, set to the internet. Okay, when the uh, ISP one down, ISP uh, ISP two take over. Okay, then you see the bit first can run on the ISP two. Okay. And then you can the ISP2 is running AS before run. Okay, and then I'm dressed The traffic goes through the gateway from the ISP2 or not. Okay, I'm go to I'm the dress route. And then I'm again. Okay, let you see. This is the gateway from the ISP2. ISP2 is running right now. Okay. ISP2. 
if the traffic goes through the cafe already okay Okay, so you can see the same number from the MyTech and the window HP clan one tracer to the internet, the gateway goes through the gateway from the ISP2. Okay, this gateway. So when the ISP1 down, ISP2 take over to the primary. Okay, and then all the traffic from the window SP goes through the MyGatek router and goes through the ISP2 okay when the ISP1 down okay and then I'm up the ISP1 okay then you and then you wait to see the traffic from the window ISP1 go to the MyGatek and go to the ISP1 back okay and then I'm go to the up the ISP1 okay and then up to the ISP1 up link okay and then you can see the ISP1 is running okay yeah. okay and then I'm start okay okay and then you can change the gateway to the ISP1 okay this is a bit for the game it's running okay that on the ISP1 Okay, and then um, tracer. Okay, that you see the now the IP address from the gateway ISV1 the same. Okay. Okay, the same. Okay, and and then in this video um is configure is working right now for the internet failover redundancy link or redundancy ISP. Okay, and then uh, in this video I finished. Okay. Uh, I hope so all of you help me to like, comment and share my video, especially subscribe my channel, Cisco Drangles. Okay, thank you for watching.